This is Twit. I want to finish up. We were talking with Cy. He has Windows XP, and he says, I know, I know. And then a week from Tuesday, Microsoft's going to never update it after that. And while I have mentioned, and we have an article on our site, how to use XP safely, there are ways to do it. It's never going to be quite as safe as using an up-to-date operating system. So the problem is, if you have XP, you probably have a pretty old machine. It could be as old as 13 years old. That's how long XP's been around. And a 13-year-old machine isn't going to be able to run any modern operating system. Uh, it might have enough horsepower, too. Windows 8 actually is pretty lightweight. But there won't be software drivers for some of the hardware, things like that. So what are, what are your options? Well, you can continue to run XP. You can buy a new machine. Or you could put another operating system on that computer. And that's why he mentioned Ubuntu. Ubuntu is a, one of many flavors, hundreds of different flavors, of a free operating system called Linux. Now, probably that makes people nervous when I say it's free. It's like, well, huh, how could it be free? Well, it's, it's, it's part of this movement we call the open source movement, where people who really love computers, who are really talented programmers, and they kind of want to give back, they're more interested in building a reputation for themselves than they are in money, um, contribute to projects freely. They're open source because not only can anybody contribute, but you can download the actual programming code and modify it to your heart's content for free in most cases. Linux was created by a Finnish graduate student in 1992, I think. His name was Linus Torvalds. And he was a computer science student, and he wanted a better operating system for teaching. In his school in Finland, they were using an operating system called Minix that was he, he thought it was terrible. And so he, he called this Linus's Minix or Linux. And he did an interesting thing. He said, I'm going to keep the copyright. I'm going to keep the name Linux. That way I can make sure if it has the name that it's approved. But I'm going to give away the source code. I'm going to let anybody contribute. Now, this was at the very beginning of the Internet. And so he kind of piggybacked on something amazing that was already happening. People from all over the world were able to download and work on this code as a, as a highly distributed project. And that's exactly what happened. Hundreds, probably thousands of people contributed to Linux to make it a better and better operating system. Software was written to run on top of Linux. Software was taken from the GNU project, which was another open source project, put on top of Linux. Companies formed to take the Linux kernel, the heart of the operating system, put a bunch of additional useful software on top of it, wrap it up in an installer. They call those balls of things, those, those are called distributions, and there are hundreds of Linux distributions, each with their own name, some of them silly, like Red Hat, Mandrake, Fedora, and Ubuntu. Now, you may say, well, it can't be, you know, free. It can't be any. Is it going to be like one of those things I see advertised on late night TV? No, no, it's very reliable, very stable. In fact, you use Linux. You use it every single day. Most of the web runs on servers powered by Linux. That's how reliable it is. Android phones are based on Linux. All Android phones run Linux. That's the operating system. You're, you're probably using Linux all the time. Maybe you don't even know it. So you can get a free version of Linux. There are many, as I mentioned. Ubuntu is a good one. U-B-U-N-T-U dot com. Um, you can download it and install it on your XP machine. You wipe. In fact, I would wipe out all of XP and just install it. There, it doesn't run Windows software very well. It does, in fact, run it, but not very well. But that's okay because it has uh, an entire Office suite available for it for free, LibreOffice. It has all the software, you know, Photoshop clone called the GIMP. There's all the software you'd want is free and available on the Linux platform. All of that's well and good. Here's the downside. And this is why I asked Cy, are you, do you know about computers? And he does. Linux has never really been for real average people. It's really designed by and used by computer enthusiasts. And so there's all, you'll use Linux for a while and then you'll run up against something that's just weird. And unlike Windows, there's so few people that use it as a desktop operating system. There's, it's sometimes hard to figure out how to get around these roadblocks. Things don't work right. I'll give you an example. I, I, uh, I was running a version of Ubuntu and I decided to use the open source version of Google's Chrome browser. It's called Chromium on it. 
And then I updated Ubuntu, got the newest version, and Chromium stopped working. It just wouldn't, it wouldn't run. Now, I was able to figure out what was wrong. There was a library. This, this is the kind of thing that happens with Linux. There was a library that Chromium needed. Remember I was talking about those DLLs? Linux has them too. There was a library that Chromium needed that the people who make Ubuntu decided didn't really need to be included in the new version. So they took it off. So I had to find the library, download a copy of it, put it on my operating system, and then Chromium worked. It's not the kind of thing you want to do, and it's certainly not the kind of thing people who are used to running Windows XP want to do. So my general recommendation is that Ubuntu is a good choice if you're an enthusiast and you like messing around with them, tinkering around with computers. You enjoy that. It's great for kids. It's a great way for kids to learn how Linux and Unix-based operating systems work. The, the, these are the fundamental workhorse operating systems of the whole internet. So that's a great thing to learn. But for the average person who just wants to surf a little bit, <laughs> open the email once in a while, might not be the best choice. You can go out and get a Chromebook, by the way. This is a good choice for a lot of people. If you don't need to do you know heavy-duty photo editing or video editing, Chromebooks are only a few hundred bucks. They work wonderfully. And guess what? They're built on Linux. But they hide all the ugly details from you. Google <laughs> manages it in such a way that there's never any any you know problem like I had. So I'm a I'm a fan. I think it's a wonderful thing. It's a great gift that Linus Torvalds gave the world by giving away his operating system. He to this day gets to say this is Linux, this isn't because he retained the trademark. So if it says it's Linux, Linus is approved. Yes, this is an approved version of the kernel. This is done properly, and he's very serious about doing that. It's one of the reasons it is a quality operating system. But uh, it isn't for, it's for people who like to mess with computers. If you're, and you know who you are. If you're somebody who doesn't want to mess with, the, I just want to surf, the, I just want to buy something on Amazon, send an email to my kids, look at some websites. If, you, if, you, if that's you, you don't want to mess with it, probably not a good choice. I think the Chromebooks are a good choice. I think a new version of Windows would be fine, Windows 8, if you can afford it. A Macintosh, if you've got even more money, that's a good choice. It's only for the enthusiasts that I'd recommend uh, Ubuntu. So I, I wanted to make that clear. There are other choices, too. And if you're a, a serious Linux enthusiast, you'll know Ubuntu may not be the version that you want, especially on older hardware. There's an ex-Ubuntu that's designed for older hardware. Um, there's other Linuxes that are designed for older hardware. If you browse around, you'll you'll find other choices that might be better for that old machine.